Hi, and welcome back to Brentech IT Support. Today we'll be looking at upgrading the Synology NAS series by adding an extra couple of Seagate iMore hard drives. So you've got to don't need to turn the drive off, just leave the Synology running, or we'll open up the drive bays, open up the packet, pop it in, and then go through the software on screen. I'll show you how to open up the drive and pop it in. If you've locked a drive, you'll need your little key and just pop it into the lock. That would be the lock position and that would be on the lock position. Pull it up. Make sure it's an empty bay we're doing. I know it is, so we're okay. And again, as we're doing two, I'll pop the second one out right now. And now you can see that we've got the one bay in there and that bay is empty but you can see straight through to the fans. We'll now get the drive ready to install. Okay. What we need to do is just take the side frames off first. So it's just pull the little tabs off, open up our drive, Place it in the caddy, line the holes up, because you should be able to see the screw holes just through there and there, and then pop these back in. That's now ready to insert into the NAS, so we'll do the second drive in exactly the same way. Now we've got both of them done, always making sure we've got our connections facing the back, so that's the front, that's the back, so it can slide in. Now we just pop them in. I'll have a quick look at the window before we put the drives in so you can see how it affects the system. Your storage manager. And you can see we've got a healthy system, we're using 56% of our drive pool so far, but we've got it without data protection because we've only got one drive. So if I make that a full size screen, we can see that we've only got bay one used, bays two, three, and four are empty. So we'll be adding one to two and one to three. Now we're gonna be using different size drives and the Synology is absolutely fine with that so we'll see how that affects it as well because I've started off with a 4 terabyte and now I'm adding two separate 2 terabytes just because of better value for me at the moment and um, it's an easier upgrade. So you can see our storage port again it's just the one drive, there's the 4 terabyte again with that Paddy. Go to the overview and now I'll pop the drives in. Okay, we'll get our first drive and pop it in. And we should be able to hear it spin up as soon as I click it in place. And drive two is now lit. We'll go ahead and add drive three straight away at the same time. And again, we can hear it spin up. And that looks like it's online. I'm going to lock these drives in so I can't accidentally pull them out. And we'll now look at the screen. Right, it's looking like we might have a DOA drive. I've got some extras so I'll be swapping it out, but I need to do some further tests. Because this is drive two and we can see 
it's saying it's healthy just by its initial settings. Drive 3, on the other hand, if I come to health info, it immediately comes up with an error. So I'm going to pull that one out again. It wasn't just badly fitted, I think there's a fault with it. We did hit click when it went in, so it looks like a dead on arrival drive. But to make sure, I am now going to scan the second drive as well, because I don't want to be adding them if they're faulty drives. So I'll just run the extended test because it's worthwhile doing it because you know something is wrong with one drive. And we'll come back to this in a bit. Right, you might have heard in there that one drive was nice and quiet and the other one had a bit of a, a knocking sound. That drive was dead on arrival, so we had to stop the video there and start again. So I've got new drives. These things happen, you know, they're then very complex components and sometimes they go wrong. So if you are doing it for servers, make sure before you install a drive, you actually run a diagnostic on an external machine for first. So therefore, you know you're going to be putting in a good drive because what you don't want to do is put a bad drive into a system that's already in a de degraded state. So therefore, you get more continuity about good, reliable service. Luckily, we were only on one drive and putting new ones in, it didn't matter for us. But if you've got a system where a drive has failed, you pull a drive out to put the new drive in, and that's also a failed drive that could potentially cause you extra problems. It probably won't, but it's not worth taking that risk. So if you're putting in a NAS system, make sure you do a test on the drive first. So some of our screenshots are now going to look a bit different because our stats have changed whilst we wait for new drives to come. And also you noticed in the video that we had a 2 terabyte hard drive. They're now actually going to be using 4 terabyte drives instead. Uh, the reason for that is that when they say you can mix and match drives in the Synology, you can start off with a 1 terabyte drive and then add a 2 and then add a 3 or a 4 terabyte drive. That's fine and it will automatically scale. What you can't do is start with a 4 terabyte drive and then add two 2 terabyte drives to give you an extra 4 terabytes of redundant storage. It won't do it that way. You, it's equal to or greater than your current drive sets. So I've got some extra drives here. One of them is the Iron Wolf drive. This is a WD drive. They're both 4 terabytes. Let's pop these in to bays 2 and 3 and see how it goes. We've popped them in now. So what we do is we'll come to Storage Manager. And you can see that we're now using a bit more space. We can now see there's drives 2 and 3 are unused and they're flagged up green there. Again, we still got it without protection. storage pool and click action add drive and we can select both drives 2 and 3 at the same time and we can see that that's the Iron Wolf and that's the WD but notice that is the FRX one so that doesn't have the shingled magnetic recording and standard layering so that's fine for our array I've tried these audio and NAS, so they may need a format to get them working. We'll see how it automatically goes. Click next. It's automatically going to format them, so that's fine. Go OK. And you can see what our new file size is going to be. And click apply. See it's expanding and initializing the drives. It's now initialized drive 2 and is working on initializing drive 3. Yep, now drive 3 has now been initialized. So it should now be increasing the pool by adding them to it. We saw that just jump there. That's gone to normal. So now it's expanding drive 3. But you can look at the statistics that we've actually still got data being processed by the server at the same time. You can see that we've got a download happening here from a remote user. 
they're currently backing their system up onto our drive. Whilst we're doing this, there's absolutely no downtime whatsoever. When I was using the QNAP and I was trying to do things for that on the QNAP, our older servers, we found that on any drive interaction, although it's hot swappable, it wasn't on the fly. It really wanted to be rebooted after rebuilding the array to get all the statistics to show up properly, and it also wanted to be rebuilt, uh, rebooted after doing expansion, after doing drive swaps. The Synology looks like it can do it hot swappable and on the fly, so I like that. Okay, we can now see here that it's expanding and checking the PADI consistency. It's only done 0.2%, so this is probably going to take quite a while. But this is a very good sign that it's going through quite nicely. And now you can see we've got redundancy for one drive fail tolerance. So if a drive were to fail, it would automatically swap to using the remaining two drives. And if you put a fourth drive in, it would then automatically swap to using the fourth drive. So this would be better for redundancy, for fault tolerance. It isn't a backup. Don't consider a RAID as a backup. Because if you get hit by the crypto locker virus and your documents get encrypted, that's going to go across all your drives. This is only purely for a single drive failure. Also, if there's um, a hazard in the property, such as a fire or a flood or something like that, again, if that drive or the server is destroyed, it's not a backup, you've lost it all. It is... A lot of people make that mistake thinking that a RAID is backup. It's not. It's better than nothing, and they are very, very good to have, but do have a backup system in place. So with our server, we've actually got a separate server both on-site and off-site to do that, so that if something was to happen, we've got multiple forms of redundancy. This process can take several hours to rebuild the array, or resilver, as it's called. And so we're gonna just pause the video here. If you missed the little bit in between, don't worry about it, it's a long process, and we'll come back to it when it's done. Whilst we're doing the expansion, we can have a look at some more statistics on how the drive is performing. If we come to our menu, and go to resource monitor. We can see all the different aspects of the Synology unit. So we can see the disk utilization is 30%, but the volume usage is now 80%. Whereas before, those were identical pretty much because it was just one drive. So obviously, out of that 80%, 30% is coming from drive one, and the rest is coming from drives two and three. We can look at the disk usage and we can see, again, it's just coming down there. So we can click View All, select the drives, and we can see how the utilisation is going through there about the reads and writes. Click OK, and we're now going to get the statistics of each individual drive. So I'll just give it some time to populate with the information. So you can see the red one is drive 1, which is our primary drive that we were using. And then we've got drive 2 and 3. And we can see the statistics on how they're working. Which is very, very nice. That should actually speed up the whole process of accessing data, as we've now got multiple drives to read to and write from at any one given time. It's interesting how the Western Digital Drive in Bay 3 is hardly being used. I assume it's just trying to populate Drive 2 first, looking at the amount of data. That light blue line, that is a combination of all three drives. Go back to Overview. CPU usage memory usage. Still, this is the default original 4 gig of RAM that it comes with, which has been handling everything perfectly. It's been very, very good. 
Um, but that is expandable, I think, up to 16 gig. If not, it's definitely expandable up to 8 gig as we've got a spare slot. Plus, we can also add the solid state drives at the bottom to give it a boost as well. But we don't need to do that as we've got good enough performance out of this at the moment. That's our network performance. Back to the discs, volume performance. So you can see that it's reading everything off drive one and it's writing everything to drives two and three. You can see that there is a blue at the back. Again, I think that blue peak there is again the total rather than drive three. So it looks like it's alternating a bit between which drive it writes to, which is fair enough. And you can see they've actually got some users connected to the system at the moment. And so if you come back now and have a look at the overview, we can see that the disk usage is only around about 33%, whereas the total volume usage is 100%. So we are going to get much better throughput as the each disk can read and write independently from each other, but the volume as a whole will then be working at full capacity, whereas before, as soon as our single disk was at 100%, the volume, because it was the only disk, was also immediately at 100%. So this is going to give us a much, much better throughput and also gives us one drive worth of redundancy. Okay, it's been over 24 hours by quite a bit now and it's now finished doing drive 2. So we can see that the total amount of reads is this blue line up here. You've got the red line and the pink line here. The red line is drive 1 pink line is drive 2 and we're reading from both of those drives now and you can just about see at the bottom purple line down there which is drive 3 which isn't really being read from at the moment but on the right side again see your total amount of writes and you've got your pink which is drive 2 red there drive 1 and purple drive 3 so we are now writing to all three drives we do have a steady stream of data coming in from off-site. So all three drives are being written to because drives one and two need to update the new information that they are getting. You can see here now that drive one, two and three are now all classed as normal, whereas that was just initialized. And we are expanding 21% total, but that's talking purely about drive 3. Drive 1 completed last night. So if you have physical access to your Synology storage box, what I suggest is you put one drive in, do the expansion, and put the second drive in and do the expansion again. That way you immediately get expanded data if you're really running out of data. If you've got plenty of data spared, then it's fine, you can do both at once. But if you are like, well, you know, I could easily run out of data any moment, I'll just, just do one at a time. It might well take longer to do that as an overall process, but you then get an instant storage boost. If you haven't got access to it, definitely do it all in one go. It works perfectly well. Comparing this to the QNAP system, it works so, so much better. I haven't done a video on the QNAP one, but when I was doing it uh, for myself, you lost all forms of data analytics. All your drive percentage, all your drive speeds, all your upload and download speeds, all just disappeared whilst it was doing that. It couldn't handle that amount of data, I assume. And then when it did complete on the QNAP, one has to do a reboot to get all the information to start showing again. 
So the Synology definitely seems to handle this a lot, lot better. I'm very happy with what we've got. I'm very happy with the setup. and It's working very, very well. When it's all done, we'll come back to it and show you the expansion. But we'll quickly pop into the server cupboard and we'll show you what the hard drive light's doing because that's indicating how that is working as well. Here we can now see that drives 1, 2 and 3 LEDs are flashing indicating that they are now using the data on those drives both in reads and writes. It doesn't tell us individually if it's a read or a write, it just says that the data is being the drive is being accessed. If it was solid green it just means that the drive is present and powered. You can see that disk 4 is not lit at all as that is currently an empty bay. I've gone and added the bay numbers with the dyno label printer so if there's any faults it's easy to identify which bay I've pulled out and where it goes. We've just done a save of our video to the server and you can see the spike in the data traffic there and that spike is then represented just by a tiny little spike there but you can see how that has affected the system straight away. Now our overview you can see how the two drives reading at the same time and writing to that third drive is now at 65% volume across all uh, per disk and it's 98% for the entire volume. Again, if you switch back to disks you can see uh, yeah, it's about 60% there and about just under 40, it's about 38% or something there and then that's how the disks are represented in here. It doesn't show you per disk here, which is a bit of a shame, but it, it is showing you that there is a difference between what individual disks effectively are doing to the overall volume, which is your RAID. In this case, it will be the Synology Hybrid RAID, the SHR. Okay, we can see now that the drive capacity has increased to 4.9 terabytes and we can now see that the read speed and write speeds have now dramatically dropped. The overall total read speed is higher than the combined three because we're able to read a part of drive one, a part of drive two and a part of drive three simultaneously which gives us an overall greater read speed and the same with writes as well so that's the actual drive usage and that's the overall volume usage. If you check to see what the storage pool looks like, we can now see that all three drives have gone to normal. Again, you can see the increased capacity now to 7.4 terabytes. The reason why this is between the 4.9 available capacity and the total capacity is because we are currently using 2 terabytes. So you can just see that is the difference there. Again, you can look at the individual volumes to show us there. All three drives are now connected and the overall view is we can see that the three bays have been marked off and one slot is available. So that's all good, all working well. An overview of the standard system usage is obviously dropped as now it's only standard data being used rather than a build of the array, so that's now the standard daily use of data with our standard network traffic. It's idling pretty much, even though we've got multiple users still running on our system, this system handles it absolutely perfectly. It's wonderful, really happy with it. That's how to add drives to your Synology array and expand your storage capacity. Hope you found the video interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a good thumbs up, like and comment. Please also subscribe to our channel, that will always help with the viewer numbers and help promote the channel. Thank you for all our viewers that we do have and for all the comments that we do keep getting. Do really appreciate it. So hopefully see you next time. Bye for now.